Hey, this is Norwood. I play bass in a band called Fishbone. And you with Tom Warden on FaceTime. Bow! Well, it's about that time again that my man Chalk from Soul For Real is going to bring us the next segment of Dumbass People For Real. So what's going on, Chalk? What up, Todd? Another beautiful one here in Atlanta. Here's the pics for Dumbass People For Real. Watch. Wow. known for ska, funk, punk, reggae, the works. You guys all know the group Fishbone. This guy's a lead bass guitarist, one of the greatest in the world. And he's also the founding member of Fishbone. So let's take a look at the clip. No you know, I'm, I'm, I'm having, I'm like living my best life, and uh, you know, really, because I woke up this morning, I ran, I worked out, and then I jumped in the ocean with my surfboard, and then I came inside, and I played some bass. I got a call. <laughs> From my homie Wet Daddy, he said he, he might have COVID. We just did, we just did some, we just did a show, uh, 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 with Ethan Tucker, and, mm -hmm. and playing playing bass and drums with Ethan Tucker, in in uh, uh, Wyoming. He thought he might have. He was like, I either got COVID or I got a chest cold. So so we both went out and got tested, and we are both COVID free. I'm, oh, I'm living man. my best life. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. vaccinated. I'm vaccinated. Me too. You know. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad you actually brought that up. Um, I, I'm one of these people where I believe that everybody has a choice. Live your own life. Have fun. Um, I don't like where... And I was talking about this with Rock This Monster from Health to Skelter a couple of days ago. It's my boy. And I was talking, and I gave him an analogy where the world right now is at the point where it's so stupid, where it's like, if Norwood Fisher loves chocolate ice cream, right, and I like vanilla, we're at the point in this world where it's like, now Norwood's not going to talk to me because I like this flavor. Like, that's where we are right now. And it's like, guys, it's, it's so stupid what's going on. Everybody has an opinion. Everybody has a choice. This is every person lives their own life. You know what I'm saying? But I, I think people are losing their sense of humanity when it comes to their friends and family and everything else. It's like it's this past couple of years has been crazy. Have you been seeing the same thing that I'm seeing? Um, yeah, and it's, it's been slowly creeping on us. But we have, like, in my opinion, like, one, where we are, the crossroads is we have choices to make to be of service to self or of service to others. Yeah. Right? So I wear my mask. I get my vaccine. It ain't just for me. It's because I got to walk in my mother's house. That's right. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, you know, I want to hug my daughter. And I don't want her to suffer because I didn't, you know? Right. I'm I'm also like, you know what I mean? So all in all, like I, I don't want to enter an elevator and have somebody go home to their loved ones. I, I don't want to do a show and have somebody go home to their loved one. And like I, I don't want that. Yeah. You know? So 
mine is 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 uh, uh, is from being it, 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 the the pursuit of in service of others. Mm -hmm. And and if we all thought about our neighbors, our friends, our loved ones, then then maybe we'd have a better planet. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, it seems everybody's a little more selfish today instead of thinking about others. And um, I agree with that 100% because I could have the greatest immune system and be a host of COVID and give it to somebody who can't handle it. And I'm technically a murderer, you know, whether I know yeah. it or not. It'll never, you know, and that's the way I look at it. And I agree with you 100%. It's, uh, you know, there's a lot of theories out there. And I appreciate everybody's opinion. But I'm an event producer, right? I'm a talk show host. I'm actually coming out to LA in the end of August. So I have to go by guidelines because I'm here in New York City. So I have to go by the city of New York guidelines because I also run New York City's Times Square Peace Concert that happens every year. So they just announced today and they're going to start doing it across the board um, that if you're in a restaurant, um, a small establishment, an event, Anything that you're a part of, they're going to require people to be vaccinated. You got to show your card because their attitude is for you to be a part of a big area. Uh, they want to make sure that, the, you know, people are at least safe. There are people getting it, but I think people have to confuse that. The vaccine wasn't created to prevent, right? It was created like the flu and everything else where if you do get sick, it's like a cold or anything. Your body can fight it. And then you're good. But if you don't, until they find an actual cure, you can end up in the hospital and then boom, boom, you're done. And I think people are getting that mis, you know, misread about what's going on right now. And uh, speaking of that, you as a performer. Well, what? wait, wait, let me just say something to that. Because, you know, people in general are, are uh, they, they, they got a problem with uncertainty. Of course. It's how I see it. They yeah. want they want the CDC, the American Medical Association, the, the people in positions of power to say things and give us certainty. Mm -hmm. Right? And fuck all y'all, certainty doesn't exist. Like certainty is a fucking illusion. Yeah. Right? Like because if a comic come down and smack this motherfucker, ain't nothing nobody could do to stop it. <laughs> right? And it could happen. There's no guarantees. I work yeah. out, I run, I try to do it on a daily basis. That don't earn that might not earn me one more day on this planet. Mm -hmm. You know? But my hope is that it affects the quality of life. Yeah. And that ain't a guarantee. Facts. You know, I, I better do it for, I better live for right now for the day what makes me happy. Mm -hmm. And being in service of others makes me happy. And I like that a lot. You know, that's crazy, man. I'm so glad you're the person who I thought you would be. Um, I was actually one of your fans back in 92. I used to go to La Palooza on Randall's yeah. Island. And Fishbone, La Palooza is a great show, but Back then, I mean, the lineup was crazy, and it was one of the best shows I've ever seen. I mean, yeah, Fishbone, Smashing Pumpkins, uh, what was it, Soundgarden was on there, the Beastie Boys. I mean, it was such an amazing lineup all the time. You also had the P-Funk band. I love you guys playing back then, man. It was, um, and then obviously you had high steppers and you had the grunge crowd and kicking people's ass all over the dirt road and all that stuff. And uh, I don't do that no more. <laughs> but it, it, it was such a great show. So many great vibes. And La Plusa has this way of giving back to the community. It was just about community, right? Bringing people together through all sorts of music. Um, and I know your good friend is Stephen Perkins from Jane's Addiction, which was part of that as well. Um, how do you feel now that people are starting to perform again um, in front of crowds instead of just virtual? Are you excited about it? Or are you still like, kind of like 50-50 until you know 
more that we can really be a little more safe getting out there. Well, you know what? Like, 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 look, Lollapalooza just happened last weekend. Yeah, that's right. So, you know, I'm I'm waiting for this. I'm looking for to see what what the stat what the statistics are on what happened. They, you know, I. I would love to rock crowds. If and if if all we did was play outside from here on, I'd be happy. Just send me to South America in December, you know. Yeah. Send me to Australia in January. Just a good. I'll follow summertime. Play outdoors, you know. And and we'll do. We could maybe do okay. But mm -hmm. but uh, you know I. I, I love playing inside a sweaty ass club too. Like if you know, <laughs> it's is is is, and I will miss that if it don't come back. You know. Yeah. If, or, but but the thing is, is like I've always thought about like what we're going through as, is is like, you know, people who don't want to wear masks, people who don't want to get vaccinated. Yeah, you would maybe have a right to to not do that, but. Where's the rights of the potentially infected, right? Who 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 want to be safe? Mm -hmm. You know, like, do I have like do I have a right to not get sick? Yeah. You know, like, or or, you know, like the whole, you know, now we got these variants. You know, the lambda is is now becoming a thing after the delta, and yeah, you know, it's like. It's like if if everybody played safe, we would maybe we wouldn't have to be here and you know fuck the purveyors of misinformation, you know. Yeah. But but it's I'm I'm gonna let me just say this because this popped in my head a minute ago. No, um, that's what we're all about. Very, no. my, the very first time I staged those, mm -hmm. right? Dead Kennedys. The Starlight Roller Rink in Reseda. Yeah. It was the dead old Kennedy, the dead Kennedys and the butthole surface, and I don't remember who opened. <laughs> I remember that group, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gibby Haynes, right? Yeah. The craziest shit. Anyway, mm -hmm. Angelo went up and staged those. And I was like, oh shit, I got to do it now. And I ran up and I staged those. There's just big old swan dive, and there was there were shards of metal coming from the ceiling. I cut my middle finger on my right hand, and like put my arms out, went clear over the crowd. Was coming down, like I'm seeing the ground get closer and closer. I'm like, oh shit, this is going down. <laughs> and much to my surprise. I went I went over I'm fake I'm like like just you know five feet turning into four feet from the ground and this motherfucking dude grabbed my ankles and my my both my feet on either side of his head grabbed my fucking ankles and saved me. Oh man. Yeah, that could have been majorly lethal if you felt hit the wrong way. Bro, punk rock. Yeah, is community. Yeah, big time. From that, from and, and I knew from being in my pits and getting knocked on my fucking ass, and people just immediately, I'm like, I'm about to get trampled. Whoop, got picked up. That's punk rock. To me, yeah. that's what it's about. So punk rock is about community. You know, you get yours on. But somebody was somebody was looking out for me, mm -hmm. and to me, that's that's what's missing with some of these people. Like everybody can't. I understand people with with uh, 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 pre-existing conditions. Some people maybe can't get a vaccine. Yeah, I have a friend and, that uh, can't get it, and it's 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 causing a problem with her pocket. Because as a musician, if you choose not to understand that a lot of the gigs that you normally get booked on, 
unfortunately, those producers cannot book you because they have to go by the guidelines, which means that your money pocket is going into the crapper right now. So, yeah. So, yeah, continue. So, yeah, yeah and, and, and maybe, you know, maybe there's a smart way to allow those people to, to operate because masks do work. You know, but anyway, but my whole point, I'm staying with this in service of others thing. Somebody helped me out every time I was in a pit. Mm -hmm. You know, I got fucked up in the pit too. You know, oh, yeah, we, but, we all have, yeah. But, <laughs> but majorly, I got picked up when I was down, I got caught when I was stage diving, and, and I, you know, I had some thrills and spills, but by and large, Bro, and that's really that's really good living, and that's what it's about. So, mm -hmm. anyway, look, we, I think I said all I have to say about that one, and I think everybody know where we stand on that. But you know, um, but but yeah, you know what? And hey, uh, 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 you know, hey, but right now, Fishbones write new songs. I know, I was, I was hearing about that. We, we kind of finished the process. We're working with Fat Mike from No Effects, Fat nice. Records, working towards the release there. And we just, uh, like, we had, we had done three songs, and we went back just to kind of restructure them a little bit, and then we wrote nine more. And wow. maybe we'll land on six, you know, and we're about to, so we're about to start really recording. You know, I'm excited about it. It's, it's you know, five OGs. Kendall, Kendall ain't with us though, but he did come back and do the Allison Chains tribute. Yeah, that was in 2020, right? In November, no, where he came yeah, back. Yeah, wait, was that 2020? Yeah. Yeah, in, in November, I believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was last. I don't remember it's been it last recent. year already. Yeah, it's almost been a year already, bro. Yeah, but Kendall came in and did that, so you know, there's love in the house. And so, you know, but 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 he's not officially with us. So but I'm just saying, like that was a beautiful thing. You got five OGs and a brother named Mark Phillips on guitar. And we just we just I'm I'm excited about what's possible, you know. Yeah. I would love to see Fishbone, because they're doing it once in a while. I would love to see Fishbone, like, get a nod to, like, perform at the Grammys. You know, bring them back. Because they do that with a lot of groups sometimes. They'll have, you know, Red Hot Chili Peppers perform and a few others just to come back and play. I would love to see Fishbone on that stage and just show people what Punk and Sky and all that great music was about back in the day. Like Sunless Sundays, man, which was a dope, dope song that you guys used to play and still do today. And speaking of the group, what I really wanted to ask, I haven't asked any bands this, and I should have a while back with Metallica and everything. One of the things that happens in a lot of rock and roll bands, or not even just rock, just in general, there's always an in and out of members, right, all the time. We don't have to rehash the stories about it. But how does that affect your music, because when you first start, you have a way and you have a rhythm on what you're going to do, right? What you're putting on that stage. Is it a hard transition to go from people that you weren't used to performing with and then hoping that the sound's going to be the same? And was it a, was it a trial for you to keep going up and down as the years went along? Yeah, you know what? It's what whatever, it, whatever happens, no one can emulate the originals of any band because mm -hmm. it's a particular chemical combination that creates something that that is unique unto itself. And when you move out any member, it's just different. And that's how I always looked at it. Like, you know, like if no one is going to emulate fish perfectly, you know, He's, he's got a way that he touches the drums that's completely unique to himself. Mm -hmm. You know, he might be the best drummer in the world to me, but he may not be the best drummer in the world overall. There's maybe right. better drummers, right? Mm -hmm. And, but the better drummer won't do it the way he does it. Right. 
You know, I learned that when everybody came back, there was a moment where the machine was, it was just a fine-tuned machine of it was was so intense to me, my ear. Right. I was like, oh, shit, this is why, this is what people were talking about. And I heard it. I was, I mean, you know, being so close to it, maybe, you know, like, it's times where we was on stage and I had the very clear thought, this is the best thing happening on the planet right now. There's nothing mm -hmm. better. There may be things equal, but nothing better. Right. Yeah. And, you know, maybe there was something better, but it's a good feeling, right? <laughs> yeah. Of course. But, of course. But it's completely like, you know, it, it's, 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 you know, if no keyboard player does when Chris is his instincts, Chris Dowd on keyboards, his instincts are so, we're so in tune. It's, it's just amazing and beautiful when we're all locked up and focused and doing the goddamn thing together. Yeah. Yeah. You know? People don't understand that rock bands are kind of like sports teams where the reason why some of the greatest teams do well over the years constantly is because you develop that camaraderie with each other. You know what each other's thinking, what each other's doing. You can, you know, if you decide to go off beat during a concert, just to do something out of the blue, you're kind of all on the same page, right? Because you know when it comes to rocking out, all four of you are ready to go no matter what. And that's got to be such a hard thing to find when you're, you know, obviously casting for new musicians. And obviously you guys have been blessed to really have a number of great people come into your lives in and out to continue the sound of Fishbone, um, which is pretty incredible. And speaking of music, I got to ask, man, like, first of all, you are a dope bass guitar player. I'm throwing it out there right now, seriously, because there's not a lot of great bass guitar players. I consider you one of the top in the world. Um, you got the guy from Primus, who I used to love hearing all the time play that bass. And you know what I'm saying? So yeah, it's so cool. You're fucking yeah. the most brilliant. Yeah, my name is Mud. Like, the way he started that song, that it's crazy. But what made you decide, instead of doing a lead guitar, what made you decide to get into the bass guitar? Well, when, um, when I was six years old, I asked my mother for a guitar. And I spent a couple years not really having an easy time with chords and migrating to bass lines on mm -hmm. my the guitar. And really... I was eight years old and I asked for a weight set for Christmas. And mom's got me that. Wait, you asked for a weight set at eight years old? Yeah. That's that's a little crazy. That's weird. I've never heard of a kid asking for a weight set at eight years old. That's I was great. About to get my He-Man on, bro. <laughs> You're like, I'm Mom, ready. I'm ready for dinner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was about to put in some work. And and Christmas Day, my cousin Bud came over, and he looked at me, and he looked at the weights, and he said, boy, you ain't going to lift them weights. I'll make you a deal. And he, he's like, I'll trade you my bass for them weights. And I'll throw in my amp and my speaker. And I'll throw in my rock record collection, because I'm not listening to rock anymore. I'm only listening to jazz. Okay. And so a couple years ago, we had Thanksgiving at my cousin Bud, Bud Hudsmith, we had at his house. Mm -hmm. And he, he looked over at me, he's like, yeah, it looked like you took that bass and you went kind of far with that thing. And I, looked, I was like, oh, I forgot. Uh, thanks for giving me my life. That you is know? so well, it was It was in that, in, in that moment, I I was given my life. Yeah, God has a plan, right? You know, and and uh and and then and sometime in there it seemed like it was it was before I got that bass. 
another cousin, Marva Jo Swinton. She took me and my brother to go see Graham Central Station, Larry Graham and Graham Central Station. It was yeah, the, the Ohio players' headline. Yeah. But in my mind, I left. It was a Graham Central Station show. Right, the Ohio players mm -hmm. killed it too. Don't get me wrong; they played fire, and fire wasn't even out yet. Right, it was it was amazing show, but Graham Central Station, Larry Graham, he he, he they they killed it so hard, and we had the second to the last seats in the house, mm -hmm. the Shrine Auditorium, Los Angeles. Second to the last row, Larry Graham had a mirror pick guard. Pick guard, lights shining on the pick guard, pick, lights shining all over the venue. Right. I got blinded by his pick guard. Wow. My little eight-year-old mind said, that must mean I must be, be is, I'm meant to be a bass player. <laughs> and I think I got the bass after that. Yeah. So, you know, it's just, you know, those things all in a row. My cousin Bud probably saved my life. Because if I would have lifted them weights and got all kind of yoked and, you know, diesel, I would have probably got tapped by my local gang. Like, you make a good soldier, young man. Come hang with us. Yes. Exactly. You know? Isn't it amazing how a moment, literally a moment, decision, can change your entire life. Now, if you were the eight-year-old kid and you didn't do that swap, we probably wouldn't be talking today. Or I'd probably be talking with you, but we'd be in the gym just like pumping iron together. Just yeah, be like, so yeah. what are you doing now? You know, or, or maybe, you know, maybe I, yeah, I would have, maybe I would have found my way to music, but maybe it would have been like I would have, because if I would have got diesel and got tapped to be in a gang, maybe I would have had to go to gangster rap route. Yeah, you know, if I survived the muck in the mire of what gang life can bring you. Yeah, exactly. You know? So and you're from in, in the LA uh, area, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I grew up in gang related LA, but I would never bang in. It wasn't my life. I had a base. Yeah, I love it. And that was your weapon of choice, which is an awesome weapon because. Uh, I mean, the ammo that you filled this world with music is is pretty dope, man. Seriously. Now, you played with so many great people, and they played with you as a great person as well. Because I'm sure a lot of people would name you or who I would love to play. But at this moment, is there somebody that you always wanted to rock with but never had the chance to? Yep. I, I think, like, because Tina Turner and Fishbone combo. I, oh my God. That, that, that right there. Because me and my brother was talking earlier, right? Oh my because, God, yes. Wait, 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 wait. We wasn't talking about that. What we were talking about was because because uh, 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 Little Richard's original drummer, mm -hmm. Charles Connor, just passed. And I had right. the great privilege of having a phone conversation, a couple phone conversations with Charles Conner. And in the last mm -hmm. couple of years, I really wanted to get with him, you know? And he told me some amazing stories about, about the beginnings of rock and roll and what he had to go through as a Little Richard side man. And he said, in between Little Richard tours, James Brown mm -hmm. would pick him up and he played drums with James Brown. That's right. Right? And yeah, I, I, I've had the great privilege of talking to Charles Conner and he just passed away. And, yeah, rest in peace. And uh, uh, so, so anyway, me and my brother was talking because he called me because he just found out Charles Conner passed. Yeah. So now we're talking, we're talking about rocking and rock and roll, Little Richard. Oh, of course. You know, and and but we, now we're getting historical with it, cause you know it's like, you know, cause Little Richard gave us James Brown and Jimi Hendrix, right? You can say right. Little Richard was the real first punk rock motherfucker, right? Mm -hmm. But then my brother was like, was like Ike Turner, 
right? Ike Turner gave Ike Turner was a gnarly motherfucker. He, it was he was dirty, you know. But he gave us distorted guitar, and the kind yeah. of like imagine if there was no distort, distorted guitar ever. Yeah. And remember, like, you know, he's also the person that gave us Ike Turner. No Ike Turner, possibly no Bad Brains, no Metallica, no and no Tina now. and no Tina Turner. Because remember, Ike Turner right. is the one that put Tina in his group. And it was a good melt because Tina really, if Tina was going to pop what she did, she needed to be with the group that understood, that can play with her. But, yeah. but she did something that most people don't do. Tina actually found herself while she was performing, and she became much bigger than the group. And that was the whole story behind that, was like, even though I found her, when Tina let go, took all that anger, took all that frustration like a Mary J. Blige and put it into her music, you couldn't touch Tina with a 10-foot pole. I mean, she's still rocking stadiums out now at 70-something years old. And I'm what I'm telling you right about. now, I would love, 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 love to see you and Tina turn a fishbone and Tina? Yes. Doing a, oh, my God. That would be insane. The yes. crowd would go ecstatic for that. I you got to make that make happen. Punk, I want to make some punk rock with Tina Turner. You I'm have to make happy. that happen. Just make a phone call. I guarantee if you if you try to be like, listen, we wanted, why wouldn't she want to do it? Like, all she she loves performing. She loves being with great people. No, 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 no. I heard I like I heard some some live I can Tina Turner like from from like the sixties, like like yeah. a bootleg or something. And it was punk as fuck. <laughs> the tempos was just racing. So you uh -huh. know what I mean? Like it's I remember at like once I asked Keith Morris from the Circle Jerks in off. Yeah. I like I was like, What where, where did the punk rock start? Who started it? And Keith looked at me and he said, I thought it was Chuck Berry. <laughs> you That's know, very good. A lot of combination stuff, but you know, a lot of people no, for some no, no. reason. He's saying it's only rock and roll. At its root, it's only rock and roll. And Chuck Berry was punk as fuck. Yeah. You know, basically, he's like, we ain't, we ain't doing nothing but the two step in the boogaloo like they used to do. You know. Yeah. Oh, so man, that Chuck Keith Morris said that I didn't. So <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> defer to him. Hey, did you guys ever get into um? Because I think it was a little before you guys. Uh, the Sex Pistols. Were you guys ever into the Sex Pistols yeah, growing up? Hell yeah. Yeah. Was Sid? Did you ever watch the movie Sid and Nancy, the original one, back in the um, day? It was a really disturbing movie, but they it was cut. It was kind of like one of those Clockwork Orange type of movies when Pink Floyd The Wall came out, like very deep, very dark. I remember it coming out, and I probably watched it on tour, like in the back of the tour bus, but it was wasted. I remember seeing it, but I don't retain a lot of movies either well. <laughs> oh, my God. I would, I would honestly, when all this stuff comes up, I would really love to see like a network Netflix special, Fishbone opening Fatina. And then Tina and Fishbone, like when Tina comes out to do her first song, it's the last song of Fishbone's set. You know, the other and the other person that I would love to rock with is is Grace Jones. Oh God! Right, kill like, me right now, man. I took two, <laughs> but I like I saw Grace Jones like at the Hollywood Bowl a few years ago. Mm -hmm. I was, and I was like, she's a one woman mothership. Landing. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know you, uh, like, you're giving me butterflies, man, of these names. Like I'm I'm picturing the collaboration. Oh but. yeah, like yeah, because she was like she was she was doing the damn fizzle it was like it's the seventies into the eighties. She covered a whole lot of bases, right? Yeah. You know, oh yeah. I mean Incredible. I mean, your era. And you know what's funny? They always labeled you guys as one of the most eclectic bands in the late 80s. But I thought you guys were better 
in the early 90s. Like, they never really cite that. They always say late 80s. I'm like, no, no, no. I'm like, let me tell you guys something. Fish falling during the early 90s, that was my band. I mean, they were, you guys were awesome. Still are today. And you know what's cool is you took the different route as you seasoned yourself like wine, right? Um, how does it feel now? You're doing a, a talk show. I think it's called the uh, the Rock and Talk Show, correct, that you're yeah. doing now? Um, yeah. You became a host. So how did you decide to become a host? Because now you're on the other side of the table learning from the greats as well. And how did that feel to really flip the script and now you're interviewing people that you literally work with or even grew up listening to? How do you like doing that now? You know, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty interesting. You know, the whole thing came out of like an, an organic kind of thing where just friends were together on Zoom, talking shit, having drinks. It's COVID, you know, just and and uh, I I wasn't on those conversations because it's the Think Experience band, right? Think mm -hmm. X with what and and uh, they were just like, yeah, maybe we should do this live on Facebook or whatever. And then we started doing it, and they called me and asked actually they called me and asked me was I down? I'm like, well, fuck yeah, you know. And and then it it kind of began to take a, its course and format itself. And and then all of a sudden, it was like, yeah, maybe we could do something with this. You know, the funny thing is the whole thing begins with, like, I got this band called Truly Our Disgrace here. So it's like a mm -hmm. big band, like 24 people, classically yeah. 27 people. I did, did one nationwide tour, and I took 35 or 36 people on tour wow. nationwide, right? Yeah. And anyway, I could talk a lot about that, but but uh, the tour the tour was called Nutstalk, S T A L K. And anyway, mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm doing like I'm 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 doing like this 30th anniversary shows for Julio Disgrace. It's called a 30 30, 30 30. And uh, this dude Scott Page had been showing up at Fish, at Trulio shows just sitting in. Are you talking about saxophone. Scott Page from Pink Floyd, correct? The yeah. saxophone from Pink Floyd? Floyd? Yeah, yeah. Toto, Pink Floyd, Super Tramp, and a whole lot of other right. stuff. Right. So Scott Page is showing up, and my friend David Moss, who we are together with Flea, uh, uh, created the, the Watts Conservatory of Music, right? That's some whole other right. conversation, right? Um, but I'm I'm so happy to be able to give back with these dudes. They'll, they classically have given back big. Flea oh, and God. David Moss. You don't know David Moss, but he's, he's got a gigantic heart. and he, he's Anyway, I'm going to stick with the story. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. This is what I love about these things. Sometimes yeah. the road not taken has branches to it. It's dope. He got it. Yeah. But, 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 so like, I'm, I'm, I want to like we got a we got a residency at this club called the Mint here in Los Angeles, and mm -hmm. we so we play them once a week, like every Wednesday, I think, and 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 uh, uh, I was like, okay, I want to do a theme every week, and so like we we did we the first week we did BB King's "To Know You Is to Love You" in its entirety, and the, the second week. We did a tribute to marijuana, so we did all these songs that referenced marijuana or sounded like they could be, you know, like, like a uh, 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 natural high by Bloodstone, mm -hmm. you know, or Wildflower, uh, 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 wait, I said Bloodstone already. Wildflower is Bloodstone. I'm, okay, now I'm getting confused. We did Mary Jane by <laughs> Mary Jane by Rick James, you know, yeah. Sweet Leaf, you know. Anyway, um, um, and in the the third week, I did a tribute to my man Blowfly. Mm -hmm. And if, if you don't know Blowfly, he's the original nasty rapper. He was he was a, he was a his real name is Clarence Thomas. He was a songwriter. And, Stacks Records, 
wrote a shit ton of hits. Isaac Hayes was like his writing partner. Yeah. And, and that's a whole story unto itself. And so, and in and, and anyway, like, I, 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 I met Blowfly in the late 80s and we recorded with him and I took him on tour a bunch. I was a fan from when I was in the ninth grade, mm -hmm. you know? He wrote a song called Rap Dirty. If you ain't heard it, that's I, in ninth grade, that song blew my mind. It was yeah. 19, like, there, there was only Rapper's Delight. Yeah. King Tim the Third by the by by the uh, Fatback Band. Um, well, you know I'm in the hip hop, right? You looked at my background, haven't you? You're naming like. Hey, I'm I'm telling you, like this is all we was hearing on the West Coast. Yeah, and you also had uh, Angie Stone in the sequence funk you up on the same that, label. That, but but that didn't come out yet. Yeah, that, on that the Sugar Hill record. Curtis yep. Blow's first release. That's my dude, yeah. You know, was was uh, well, I forget the name of that, but it was those. There were three. You're talking about the breaks. The breaks, yes. There were three hip hop songs, and and one was the Fatback Bands King Tim the Third. Mm -hmm. Right, and then you know they might have just called it rap at that time. Right, and then the next thing I heard was Blowfly Rap Dirty. Classic. And I was I was like, I was already a super Funkadelic fan, so I was with that shit. Anyway, <laughs> we did a tribute to Blowfly. Politically oh. incorrect as it may be, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, I'll be you honest know? with you, man. I mean, we're working on the budget now to extend the budget for Times Square. I wish I had the budget that I can bring you guys out to perform in Times Square at this peace concert. It would be Epic. <laughs> you know what? There'll be there'll be one where we can route to it and it'll work out, right? But yeah, but we, then everybody still got to get paid. That's my attitude. I ain't yeah, one of these people yeah. like you know what I'm saying. You still got a job, <laughs> you yes, know. But but wait, the fourth night we did like my man, my man David Moss was like, "Hey, Scott Page is showing up." He's like, he he simp gave me a piece of paper with three songs on it. He's like. Yeah. Scott really like kills these songs when he plays with Pink Floyd. He's like, you should consider doing these. And I looked at the list of songs and I went, I'm gonna do Wish You Were Here in its entirety. God. Right? That's so I called, song, Steve, man. I called Steve Perkins and asked him if he played drums on that portion of the set on the fourth mm -hmm. night. And he agreed. Wait, so you got Flea. Moss, Page, Perkins, Fisher, all in one group doing this Pink Floyd cover? No, 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 no. Flea wasn't there. Flea okay. wasn't there. But, but, but Still. There's, there's, a, there's a whole bunch of people in the band that have amazing histories. But And what's the name, what's the name of this group again for the people trying to Trulio Disgracious. Trulio Disgracious. Yes, it's, it's, I was, it's, it's a Julio Iglesias thing. Yeah. Right. And, I, I'm like, wait, that and sounds I'm, I'm like different to that next, right? But but so we did we did wish you were here in its entirety, right? And at the end of the night, Scott Page looked and it all like like at sound check, I'm gonna go back. Sound check, it was like, ah, this thing might not work. Like it was the band was kind of you know, it was like, ah, I was barely hanging on. The show happened, it was beautiful. Oh man. At the end of the night, Scott Page turned to me. He said, we can make a lot of money doing this. I'll get back to you when I figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> and the next thing you know, he, book, he had booked some show. He booked a show and put the, we put together a band. Trulio closed the show, but he had mm -hmm. put together a whole band. And it had some people who had played the back, background singers from Pink Floyd. And, like, it was and Perkins on drums, and it was amazing. Oh, wow. And and that and that then that evolved into Think Experience, which is now Think X. It was it was uh we played a place called Wisdom LA. This dome that had fucking amazing projections, and we we played like we did a whole stint 
like and it was it was a beautiful run and we're ready to get back to it but you know like it's got Kenny Olsen from Kid Rock mm -hmm. and, and and is 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 me Steve Perkins Kenny Olsen and 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 Scott Page are the core and then he brings pe other people in but like, now I'm I, because I touched I told you about the name Trulio Disgrace. Trulio Disgrace, oh, yeah. But that 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 came from in the in the in the eighties. The like we Fishbone was signed to Columbia Records, right? Right. And we mm -hmm. so we shared the record label with Julio Iglesias. Now I didn't know who the fuck he was. I'm so I'm reading the L.A. Weekly, the local mag would, that you go to to figure out where the club is happening, and they got this article about this dude that I ain't never heard of that sold, sold the most albums on the planet. I'm like, how could this be? I'm checking for what's happening. And so I'm reading the article and he started talking about how when he sang, he rubbed his belly and they thought it was the sexiest thing ever. I'm like, this dude sound like a pimp. I don't need to check him out. So I went, started going down to the record label and picking up his records. And yeah. Along the way, I'm like I'm talking to people about like I'm like about this Julio Iglesias guy, and I start hearing stories, and the stories is crazy as hell, you know. Yeah, like he's a gnarly, nasty dude. Yeah, and he's probably one of the most popular ever international superstar, and it's so crazy that his son, I think, exceeded him. I mean, when does that ever happen? That's yeah, crazy. Yeah. But but so so I'm I'm at the record label and I'm I'm raiding the vaults and I'm picking up and I got Julio Iglesias record on top and Joanne McGetrick was the head uh, secretary on uh, at the A and R department right at the and label she, correct so she looks at me and she goes like oh you like Julio Iglesias I'm like yeah I'm kind of into him like it's like I'm checking him out you know trying to what what is it about this dude. And she goes like, yeah, I used to like Julio, but he's nasty. I'm like, really? <laughs> she's like, yeah. I'm like, well, what, what happened? Well, she's like, I went backstage after the show, and I'm like asking, like, Julio, you, your voice sounds amazing. You, do you do anything special to keep your voice in such great shape? Like, it's so warm. And she said, Julio Iglesias looked at her and said, I sing as if I'm tickling the, a woman's clitoris in my throat. <laughs> and I, I mean, you say that. he's truly <laughs> old disgracious. That's just what came out of my mouth. And one That's I just said, a great oh, name. I'm to do something with that. So I turned around and named my band truly old disgracious. So That's truly such old a great name. I've been, it, I've been doing it since 1987 or so, but it really came out of, if you go online, you can see, there's this, there's this, there was this Jimi Hendrix tribute that, that where the Chili Peppers and Perry Farrell, he had a band called Psycom, mm -hmm. and then, and Fishbone. And I, I sing a song with, I sing If Six Was Nine with the Chili Peppers uh, in, the, in the video. And so if you look, you can find it online. Oh, so yeah. I put, together, I put together this big ass band like 17 people to do an interpretation of Jimi Hendrix's Cry of Love album. Because wow. that was in that record collection that I inherited from my, not, that was given to me by my cousin Bud. And right. that, maybe that Jimi Hendrix album more than any album has, a, has really, really affected me. So... Wow. And, and so Julio Disgracious kind of grew out of that performance. Yeah, I, I love the name. I, I think it's awesome where it's like an analogy where Julio is nasty, but you should hear us. We're even nastier. So it's kind of like, yeah, I love it. It's it definitely a cool name. We have a couple minutes left. So we already spoke in the beginning. Fishbone is re-recording some new songs. Once you guys are done, are you guys working on dates to tour around the country? Is there anything that we should know about to look for? Yeah, we got Riot Fest coming up. We got the Milwaukee uh, Summer Fest. 
right? They're mm -hmm. writing the same amount of time. We're going to do an after party at Riot Fest with uh, Mr. Bungle, which I'm super excited about because uh, if my memory serves me well, we, which it, it, we actually did, like, we were children playing, like, Fishbone traveling to Eureka, and, and Mr. Bungle used to open for us. I, mm -hmm. And it seemed like we were 19 and they were 17, by and large. Right. Right? Right. And uh, uh, you know, so yeah, it's been it's been a while since we've done anything with them dudes, and that is that was uh, some of my favorite times, you know. Uh, and uh, and then we're playing a festival in Southern California called Hoedown in San Pedro, which right. had Untouchables, I believe. Uh, uh, I don't remember who else was on it. I should be. I should know, but you know. This, this it hold down. <laughs> Got a lot of nasty names, man. I'm loving it. Well, listen, man, I, I got to tell you something, man. It's these conversations that make me want to talk to you forever. That's why I'm definitely going to have you back. I'm going to be in L.A. in August. So maybe we can link up, you know, just chop it up a little if you're around. But, uh, no, but thank oh, wait, you. Wait. You know what? You know what? And I didn't say nothing when it happened. Flea actually what? logged on and checked us out. I saw it happen. I didn't say nothing when it happened. I let him, I let him creep through. What's going on, Flea? I, hopefully, if he's still there, Flea, I would love to interview you on season three because we're going into the end of season two. I would love to interview Flea. But Norwood, again, man, thank you so much for being on FaceTime with Todd Warden. Um, it, it's one of those conversations that I could talk to you for hours, but... Of course, studios, we got time limits on all interviews. Yeah. But I'm definitely going to have you back, and I look forward to seeing you as well. And congratulations, man, on all your success and many more years, too. We appreciate you for all the music you've given us, man. Yeah, and, 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 and look, I got a, I, I just made up a new project. And, and what's I'm that? performing on Friday at, at, this, at Killer Yacht Club in Marina Del Rey. If you're in the area, L.A. area, y'all, it's, it's called... The Esoteric Order of Norwood's Terpsichorean Phenambulist. There it is, guys. You heard it from the man right here. Go check him out in Marina it's, Del Rey. It, it's, it's all improv. All improv. Yes. I love it. So, guys, check this guy out. You will not be disappointed. Norwood, I'm going to see you soon, and I appreciate you. I'm going to yeah, send my info on Instagram Messenger if you get it. Send some love back, and we'll stay in touch, and we'll go from there. All yeah, right, man, brother? I'm, I'm, I'm coming to New York just to raise hell. I want a vacation in New York. Well, we're going to talk, man. You let me know, because there's a lot of things happening here right now. I'd love to get you a part of it. So let's link up. I'll send you my info. Until yeah. then, man, listen, be safe. Keep yourself healthy, you and your family. I'm glad to see you doing well. And until then, brother, have a good night, and I'll see you soon. All right. Thank you, bro. So first, I want to thank Norwood Fisher for taking his time out of his busy schedule for being on FaceTime with Todd Warden. Such a great interview, such a great guy, and he's everything I thought he would be. Because I used to go to his concerts back in the day. And keep bringing the funk, man, and keep bringing the inspiration. I'm loving these stories, and I was obviously honored to have you on. And of course, thank you to my live virtual audience for always tuning in to FaceTime with Todd Ward, and I always appreciate you. Now tune in tomorrow night as I have a former boxer, now Hollywood actor, you all know him from the movie King Kong, Superman 1, Superman 2, The Troll World Chronicles, I believe. That's it. Uh, my man Jack Halloran is going to be here tomorrow night. So guys, until then, be safe, be well, and do not leave your past in your life, and it's like you will. Hey guys, so while you're at the gym getting your workout on, you might as well subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's the best cool down in the world. Do you feel dizzy? Make it stop. Do you Make feel it stop. Dizzy? Jesus, say it's fine.